If you're a videographer or filmmaker, then the smartphone gimbal combo is one of the most efficient, lightweight and cost-effective ways to get smooth looking footage. So in this video, I've got 15 smartphone gimbal tips that will instantly take your footage to the next level. It's coming up. Hey everyone, Steve here from Learn Online Video and today we're talking all about the smartphone gimbal combo and how you can instantly give your footage that professional look with just a few simple tips. Now if you're not using any of these techniques yet, then by the time you've watched this video, you'll have all the knowledge that you need to start shooting epic looking footage. Today I'm going to be using the iPhone 11 with the Hoem iSteady X, an ultra lightweight and affordable gimbal. I will link it below, but with that out of the way, let's jump straight into this tutorial with tip number one. Okay, tip number one, make sure your gimbal is balanced correctly. If your gimbal isn't balanced correctly, then quite simply, you're just not gonna be able to capture the best footage possible. How you balance your gimbal will vary from brand to brand, so it's definitely worth putting in that extra time to read the manual, watch the YouTube tutorial, and make sure everything is balanced as it should be. Okay, tip number two, use a wide angle lens. This will make a huge difference when first starting out. Just look at the difference between these two shots. This shot here has been shot using a standard lens and this shot here with a wide angle lens. This is the same shot, just shot using a different lens. Although I'm walking at the exact same speed in the exact same place in both shots, there is a much greater sense of movement with the wide angle shot because we can see more and there are much more elements moving within the frame. Now, depending on your phone, you may or may not have a wide angle lens. This one here, the iPhone 11, for example has one built in but your phone may not. If that's the case then I highly recommend getting one. You can pick these up relatively cheaply and they just screw on to the front of your phone. This will make a huge difference to your footage and is a crucial part of shooting much more cinematic video. I will link some in the description below. Okay, tip number three, learn the basics first. Now, if you're new to the world of smartphone gimbals, then I highly recommend learning the basics first. Don't go trying to create really complex camera movements straight out of the gate. I've got three videos dedicated to mastering basic gimbal movements. Make life easy on yourself. Learn these first. I will link them in the description below. Okay, number four, hold your gimbal with two hands. Now there will always be times where holding a gimbal with just one hand will be more comfortable and work best. Usually when shooting more of a creative or unusual shot, but for your basic camera movement, your push forward, your pull back, orbit, having two hands on your gimbal will give you the steadiest shot. Number five, learn the ninja walk. The textbook way to walk with a gimbal is with your knees slightly bent, walking heel toe, heel toe. This will help reduce the impact of your feet hitting the ground when walking, which will ultimately transfer up your body, down your arms and onto your gimbal. Bonus tip, technique. Now, let's imagine for a second that you're carrying an extremely hot, full to the brim cup of coffee that you're desperately trying not to spill. If you're just walking around normally, putting no effort into your technique, then you're going to spill your coffee. Take a minute, think about how you can walk smoother, creating less impact, and then apply that same technique when using a gimbal. Experiment with this and do what works best and feels most comfortable to you. Number six. Look at your screen, not where you're going. Framing and composition is one of the most important parts to any good shot, and the only way you're gonna nail this is to look at what you're shooting. It might be tempting to look up, and you can briefly, but try to keep your eyes locked on your screen as much as possible. This will help give you the best composition throughout your shot. Have a test run before each shot, check your pathway for any trip hazards, and then commit to that shot looking at your screen. Okay, tip number seven, lock your focus and exposure. Once you've decided on your shot or focal point, tap and hold your screen to lock off your focus and exposure. The last thing you want is an exposure change halfway through your shot. Just look at these two shots, for example. This first one is in auto mode. See the exposure change? This looks ugly because your camera is in control. You want to be in control of your camera. Tap and hold that screen, lock off your focus and exposure, and just like that, no exposure change halfway through your shot. Much more professional looking. Okay, tip number eight, you don't need to walk. 
Most beginners assume that you need to walk in order to capture good gimbal shots, but this simply isn't the case. Try using your arms and upper body to move your camera. You'll be surprised with what results you can get. Take this push forward, for example. This was shot by simply leaning with my upper body. Also, just using your arms will allow you to fit your gimbal through tighter spaces so you can get much more creative with your shots. Okay, tip number nine, use grids to keep your framing. Okay, most phones will have the option to enable grids on the camera, and this will massively help with framing your shot. Now, if your phone doesn't have the option to enable grids, then I recommend shooting via an app like Filmic Pro or Moment. I will link them in the description below. Okay, tip number 10, consistent movement. Now, this is one of the biggest mistakes I see people make when first starting out. Their camera movement isn't consistent. For example, if you're doing a push forward, try to keep your camera moving at the same speed throughout your shot. Try to avoid changing speeds, unless of course this is intentional. Changing your speed mid shot will create juddery camera movements, defeating the purpose of using a gimbal. Also make sure all of your movement is consistent. For example, maybe you're doing a tilt down push forward. Make sure that your tilt down movement is consistent as well as your push forward movement. So learn how to control your movements for the best results possible. Okay, tip number 11, dedicate one shot per clip. Okay, now I know through experience that it's really tempting when first starting out to just hit record and shoot everything all in one long shot. We're going to shoot this path, then the grass, and then up to this building. And your camera movement is all over the place without any real thought going into your camera movement. Instead, take what would ordinarily be one long messy shot and break it down into individual clips with a dedicated camera movement for each clip. So you could start with a nice push forward of the path, then a slider shot of the grass, and then how about a push forward tilt up to reveal the building. Piecing these three clips together in the edit will result in a much more professional looking finish. Okay, tip number 12, take advantage of your gimbal's features. Now, depending on what gimbal you have will depend on what features you have. So get to know your gimbal and use its features to your advantage. Take this gimbal here, for example. This is the Hoem iSteady X. It has features such as inception mode. It also has the ability to switch from landscape to portrait mode at the tap of a button. So perfect if you're shooting YouTube videos and Instagram stories. Okay, tip 13, invest in a power bank. Okay, now the last thing you want on a shoot is to run out of battery, whether that's your phone battery or the gimbal battery. A power bank like this one here has helped me avert a disaster on many shoots. Using your phone in video mode all day will kill your battery. If you've connected your phone to your gimbal via Bluetooth, this will kill your battery. Don't get caught out halfway through a shoot with no battery. Go prepared, I will link one below. Okay, tip 14, shoot in slow motion. Okay, now shooting at a high frame rate or in slow motion will allow you to slow your footage down in the edit, and this can really help smooth things out. Slowing your footage down will help take away any micro jitters you might get in your footage, particularly common when first starting out. Shoot at either 60 or 120 frames for super slow motion. Basically anything higher than 24 frames per second. Once you've had a bit of practice, you'll no longer feel the need to shoot at a higher frame rate and slow your footage down because you'll be getting smooth shots straight out of camera. Okay, tip number 15, mix up your angles. Now the default angle when using a gimbal is up here at eye level, and if you're just starting out, then that's the angle I recommend you nail first. But as you start to improve and get more confident using your gimbal, mix up your angles and get creative. Move your camera close to the ground. Look for interesting angles and movements. Try squeezing your gimbal through tight spaces. I've got three videos dedicated to gimbal moves. I will link them in the description below. So there you have it, those were 15 gimbal tips to help you master the basics. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, let me know, give it the old thumbs up. And if you'd like to learn more about video production, more about smartphone gimbals, then you can watch one of my other tutorials just over there. But that's it from me. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.